welcome to Liberty Life. Today we're going to be talking about the scarlet worm or the tola worm, otherwise known in Hebrew as tola at shani. Shani is red, tola at the worm, the red worm. Why are we talking about a red worm on Liberty Life? Very simple. Behind me you see a beautiful scarlet red, holy red, temple red. Some people know it as argamom, uh, Roman red, or uh, or scarlet, and, and and there's many verses about this. Though your sins are like scarlet, they'll be white as wool. And it's interesting that the very creature that's used to make this gorgeous red color, which appears in the temple veil, in the temple garments, in the priest garments as the priest belt, uh, even the garments of Moses, even in the rendition of the Ten Commandments movies, he's wearing a red, black, and white garment. Uh, we have the red cross, which is red and white. And this very famous red, uh, what you see again behind me is from the Tola Atshani. It's from the red scarlet worm or the Tola worm in Israel. Now, this species, which is a Cacostus species, actually appears on oak trees. And what it does is, and this is a representation of Messiah. I'll tell you why. This, matter of fact, I have some right here I'm going to show you. Uh, now this, believe it or not, this is used widely in the food industry. And many things you would be surprised when you look at the red dye, where the dye is actually coming from. Uh, these are the worms here. And this is a, uh, this is an actual piece of wood and it, and it's stained by the Tola at Shani. So what this, uh, what this worm does, which looks more like a grub, is it will attach itself to the tree and then it it fastens itself to the tree. Once it connects to the tree, that's it. It never comes out. It gives birth to its young. For three days, the young feed upon the mother and it gets stained with the red crimson from the mother and they break forth and they go out. And then the mother turns white, like a, almost like a waxy white and that's it because she's given up the ghost. So though she has red, though your sins are like scarlet, they'll be white as wool. Now it's interesting when Jesus attached himself to the tree for your and my behalf, we are now covered in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the message of Pesach or Passover. The blood of the Lord is literally stained on the door of our house, on the doorpost, the mezuzah, the, the, the front let the front part, the furthermost part of our life is that we're covered in the anointing and the redemption, the shedding of the blood of our master, of our maker. Now, what you see here is red wool, again, stained by the same, uh, the same uh, creature, which in the uh, technical tongue, let me tell you the name of this. The name for this uh, technical crimson worm is Corsus coquifera. And it, it actually lives on the branches of oak trees, where in Israel, some of the, uh, some of the oak trees that were not there earlier in the biblical narrative, uh, we find on a different species of oak, which I just named. Uh, there are two species of the insect, Kermes, you'll find Kermes die, Kermes biblius, which is carmine. So if you look in, uh, even in the food industry, if you find a red dye, like uh, ruby red grapefruit juice, even Starbucks used to use it in their strawberry frappuccinos. Uh, it's in so many things. If you find carmine dye, it's actually coming from the tola worm, believe it or not. Um, now this worm in Israel, we have writings from the book of Josephus in Wars where uh, he specifically describes that this represented fire. The color from this worm dyed something like the big temple veil um, that was used in the... Uh, Mishkan, the tabernacle, because uh, it was made out of blue, scarlet, and purple dyes. Well, we know the blue and the purple, the dibromo, indigo, and the indigo, purple and blue, are from the murex trunculus, which is a uh, uh, murex, uh, it's, a, it's a mollusk snail, if you will, off the shores of Israel. It was very famous in Tyre and Sidon. Matter of fact, Lydia, the first convert of Paul, was a seller of purple, and it became royal purple because only royalty could afford it. And then later on, the Roman royalty outlawed and disbanded anyone else from wearing it so that 
kind of like you can't put uh, police markings and sirens on a car that's not an active duty police car because we can't confuse what is official from what is not. And so in the same way, when the Roman magistrates went out with all of their ranks, they had certain colors that were only for high-ranking officials. And again, the worth of this die uh, has proven it's like the worth of its weight in gold. It doesn't fade after thousands of years. And we keep finding these archaeological... Uh, here's a picture here in here and here actually of specimens of dyed woolen garments. And we have a red one. Look at this red fiber dyed thousands of years old from the land of Israel, Eretz, uh, uh, Israel. Look at that. These fibers date back thousands of years. And again, they source from the Tola worm. Now, what's amazing about this worm uh, is that one, it's organic, uh, just like a shofar comes from a sheep ram. Uh, it, it has to be alive and it has to give up itself so that we can extract its worth or its beauty. Doesn't that speak of Jesus Christ the Lord? He is alive and he gave up his life so that we could extract, extract his true beauty. And then he takes it back again in the life of his followers. And yet he lives still. So unlike a worm, our God liveth still, but he gave his body, a physical body. The other thing about a worm is it's all flesh. It's all temporary. It's all literally a biomechanical shell. Something more to the life of God is more than the biomechanical shell. It's the spirit of God, the breath of God, the word of God, the mercy of God, the power of God, the truth of God. But isn't it amazing that he took on a physical body as we have physical bodies so that he can identify with us so we could taste, smell, touch, see, feel, and know that the life of God is actually walked amongst us on the same earth and the same atmosphere in time and space. Now go fathom that the one who made time and space confined himself to time and space so that you and I who are in time and space could enter into everlasting habitations. There's another thing about this worm you have to know. Now, this worm, this Tola worm, not only dates back to the biblical era and before, obviously it's, it's spawned as in Genesis when God created it, but it's rectified as a uh, symbology. Remember it says in Hebrews that Jesus Christ, act the veil was torn and the body was Christ, meaning his body was tore for us. And how is it tore? It connected, he connected himself to the cross, to the wood. And, and the wood is now stained, the, the cross beam is now stained with the blood of Messiah. And our doorposts for Passover were stained by the blood of the Lord Messiah, the blood of our Passover lamb who was slain for our freedom, for our life. Remember the Tola worm only gives up its blood, only gives up the color, only gives up the identification. What's the deal with the color red anyway, by the way? Well, the word Shani, red, it symbolizes blood, for without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, right? This is why Messiah was crucified and yet lives on because if he didn't actually give the blood, if the, if the perfect blood of God that comes from the, we're, see, we're creation, he's creator, but he took on the body of created so that we who were created could become the sons and daughters of the creator. Literally by that body, by shedding his blood, he passes then his life, his divine life and his atonement to us. And the blood literally is seen. It literally must be applied. It's applied to the Kodesh HaKodeshim, the holy place, the Ark of the Covenant. It's actually applied on the doorpost of our heart. We are covered in the blood. We plead the blood. When people say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, it's not just a statement. What they're basically saying is, by that authority, by that mercy, by that forgiveness, by that atonement, by that grace, legally, by that propitiation, by that trade, of appeasing the law, appeasing the wrath, appeasing the sacrificial demands, the korbanot, to draw near to God on, on what right, right? What On what right do you, who all of us have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God, on what right do you approach a sinless and holy God unless he made a way for us? Well, how would I know that? How do you know the children of the Tolashani? How do you know the scarlet worm's children? Because they are stained in the blood of their parent. So God is our parent. We are children. Abba, Father, means to come from. We come from God because we are born of God, not in the will of man, 
but by the will of God. And we emerge, even as we did from the waters of the womb, we emerge through the waters of baptism, and we are then covered in the, the blood of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord. We are sealed. Why? By proclaiming his name, by proclaiming his word, by, by calling forth the very things that he has called forth in his commandments, his teachings, we become his disciples. When? When we merely say them, when we walk in them. Jesus said, they will know you by your love, right? By the color also. Isn't it interesting that love is known by red, a red heart, right? And a heart pumps blood through the whole body. So there's no, the, the heart and the blood are one. Once the heart stops, the, there's no more, the life drains out. And what ends up happening is this red heart that pumps the living blood, which is the life of the creature through the body, is the very heart, love the Shema, love the Lord God, all of your heart, because this heart is the heart that loved you. This is the heart that loves you. This is the heart that will love you. And this red blood that flows through the heart, that flowed from Calvary, that flowed from Eden, right? The will of God flowed forth to take us back, to redeem, to tikkun, to heal, to repair, that brought us back into fellowship with God did not happen but by the shedding of blood. And again, by that blood, by that heart, by that love, by that color red, literally, we are stained. And this is how we know that we are the children of God when we walk in the light of his truth, when we keep his commandments. Then I and my Father will manifest ourselves to them and make our home within them.